All righty. Hey guys, how are you all this afternoon? Good, I'm glad you could make it to the library. Um, before we start with our Hibernation and Friends program, I want to remind everybody that next Saturday at this exact same time, one o'clock, exact same place in the community room, we will have a storyteller who is sponsored by Humanities Montana who will come in and do storytelling for kids. I believe it's going to be fairy tales. So storytelling, if you've never come to a storytelling program, is a little different than when I do story time with a book. Storyteller like tells a story. She acts it out. She doesn't have a book. It's a story that she's either written or she's um, pr um, producing for someone else. So she will become, she will be here next Saturday at one o'clock. Okay. So today you guys are here for hibernation friends with the Bighorn Canyon recreation area. And Moss. Can you give Moss a hand? Some good listeners for them. So we are coming here to talk about hibernation. Does anybody know what hibernation is? Okay, what is it? Hibernation means that uh, Yeah, exactly. What do you think it is? It's a snow where humans sleep through the winter, so Yeah, exactly. So, did you guys know that there's actually a couple different types of hibernation, technically? So, hibernation is an, an umbrella term. There are a couple different types. So, there's true hibernators. Which means that an animal sleeps for more than seven months completely through the winter. They don't wake up, they don't go to the bathroom, they don't get up to eat or drink. A couple examples of true hibernators are like the black bear. Black bears can just sleep throughout the entire winter without getting up to, like I said, use a bathroom or eat or do anything. They only sleep. And that conserves their energy so that they're ready in the springtime to get up and have their babies, and be able to hunt and gather, you know. So those, that's a true hibernator. And then there are animals that enter a stage called torpor. You guys say torpor? It's kind of a funny word. Torpor? So torpor is a state of dormancy, which basically means that they're, they're sleeping, but they're lowering their blood pressure, their blood sugar, they're lowering all of that down so that they can conserve energy. And then they can get up and then still go, go out and eat or drink or use the bathroom. But during that state of dormancy, during torpor, they're, they are sleeping. They're just very low, um, not have a lot of energy because they're conserving it all. A couple examples of that is our, a lot of our smaller mammals. So like the skunk does that. And sometimes badgers do that. They're pretty active in the winter time, but on super cold days, they will do that. They'll enter a stage of torpor, maybe for an entire day if it's super cold out. But otherwise they're pretty active during the winter time. They like, they like to go out and hunt. Um, rabbits can enter a state of torpor too. Um, not very often because they got those long legs to run through this through the snow and as you guys felt the really soft fur that keeps the snow off of their skin when it's light and fluffy like that the snow will fall on top of their skin instead of being directly onto their skin like it's wet fur that sticks to you um so there's torpor and then there's a special term called brumation flap it That mean what? And brumation is kind of the same thing as torpor, except it's only for reptiles and amphibians. So reptiles and amphibians, you don't see them during the winter, do you? No, because they're cold-blooded. So what they'll do, they'll get into their habitat and they'll sleep. They'll sleep it off, usually in groups. So I'm going to show you guys kind of a scary picture in here. That that is what a rattlesnakes look like during the winter time. I see. I want to hear. 
yeah. So the so rattlesnakes are super cool. Mm -hmm. They sleep in 10, 10 to twenty groups. Yeah. yeah. Could you guys pass it back so that I can see? Yeah, I'll show people in back too. And so frogs do the same thing. They'll get into their habitat. Usually the rattlesnakes out here are in rock piles, or under gravel, or sometimes they dig their, their own trenches. This is the I know what that bear my do. Mom what that bear. So that's what brumation is for amphibians and reptiles. Um, speaking of amphibians, I think we should talk a little bit about um, all of these different habitats. So I was talking about how um, rattlesnakes like to sleep in groups, right? Only a few animals do that. So skunks do that. They sleep all together. I missed it. Here's a cute picture of the baby skunks sleeping together. Um, I guess. Yeah. You guys can pass this one. Yeah. yeah. And on the back of that is kind of a is an example of what their habitat looks like. I did want to talk about birds and what they do during the most birds like to migrate, so there's hibernation, there's migration. Migration is when they start heading north or south, depending on the wet weather. So right now, when it's, it's super cold up north, they start heading south where it's warmer, because it's super cold up here in Montana, but it's super warm down in like Arizona, right? So that's where they're heading right now. Um, a few birds have adapted to just live throughout the winter, like great horned owls. Have you guys ever seen a great horned owl before? They're really big. They're really big owls, and they have little tufts on their on their head that kind of look like ears. Here, here's a good picture. So they like to live in trees. They're really good at camouflage. Great horned owl, owls have, I wish I brought my feathers, but they have really thick feathers. And they actually raise their babies during the winter time to get them prepared to also be adapted, adapted to the freezing cool temperatures. And you guys can just set them down on the ground together all the time. And bald eagles are super cool because they won't immediately migrate. Sometimes they'll wait around and you can usually see them around big lakes and water because their main food source is fish from the water. So they won't leave their habitat until the water freezes completely over. So that's why you can see them flying around a lot during the winter time because they're scoping out the sea and seeing if their water is frozen yet and whether they want to stay or go. Same with golden eagles. So those big predatory birds that you see flying around. Um, same thing with crows. Crows are kind of different though because they are scavengers to the max and they like to eat trash, roadkill, whatever. So they can stay wherever they want, whenever they want. Okay. 
Um, we'll talk about the couple adaptations. So I talked about how the badger, um, enters the stage of torpor, but only when it needs to. And it's usually pretty active during the winter time, like I said, but they've adapted to these this really thick fur, so they can stay super warm and they dig deep underground. So if you see a big pile with a hole right next to it, big pile of dirt. That's from their claws. They dig and just leave all that dirt right there. So it's pretty obvious when you find a, a badger habitat. And you guys can, can either come up here and pet some more and we'll talk some more about them, or I can pass them out a little bit. I'll look for the So you can feel them. I'll look for the weapon. Another animal that enters torpor we talked about is the skunk, obviously. And skunks usually have their babies in the spring, and then they'll mostly sleep through winter. But if they do need to get up for food, it's usually only to scavenge. Um, so they, they're kind of, we'll get into trash and things like that, kind of like raccoon every once in a while. Um, but they usually won't leave unless they really, really have to. There's a skunk. This is a muskrat. This is actually a true hibernator. So muskrats, which is kind of interesting because I've seen muskrats during the winter time, but their true hibernation period is about exactly seven months, so they're barely true hibernators. So, because they, they're they really skittish, they're really easy to wake up because their their dens are, they usually just go in the banks of rivers, banks of canals, and the sides of the water, so if the water freezes up, it can disturb their, um, their habitat, and then they'll easily wake up, and then they'll be kind of out and about scoping around. What I, what I looked up because I was like, really, muskrats are true. Muskrat. Muskrats are also super cool because they have a really fine, like, oil texture to their to their fur. That fur has been kind of worn out since it's been since it's kind of old. But this special oil helps them swim through the water and glide through the water, so that the their fur doesn't stick to their skin really bad. They can just shake all the water off really easily with that oil on their skin. Oh, I'm a rabbit. What do you guys think makes the fox not a hibernator? Why do you think it's so tough in the winter time? What do you got to tell me? No? <laughs> no? You? Uh, I think Act like skunks, <laughs> like a, like fox, like a, like a, well, like a, because yeah. they have like all different colors on them. Yeah. yeah, so they have different colors on them. They could be white during the winter time, and that helps them during the winter. Oh, um, I think they're just not. Yeah, well, that's a that's a good good point because they don't they don't hibernate because they do they do go alone, right? So that means that there isn't they don't have anybody to protect them. But when they're white, this one's a red fox because it's supposed to blend into things like brush. Um, the fall leaves, those sort of things, the dirt on the ground, they can blend into pretty well. But when they're white during the winter, nobody sees them. The reason why they don't hibernate is because they've got this super thick fur to keep them warm. And they have these big claws to dig in the snow. And have you guys ever seen the video? There's videos of what foxes do to hunt during, during the winter time. So they have really keen sense of smell, really keen sense of hearing, so they can hear 
when mice are underneath the snow or they can hear when um, like prairie voles, prairie mice are sleeping under the snow. So they'll jump up right into their, right into their um, tunnels and then be able to eat during the winter time. Because they've adapted with that super good sense of smell and hearing. And they're small enough for predatory birds not to come pick them up. Also because they're predators themselves, predators don't usually try to like to eat predators. Um, so most animals leave them alone. They can just do their thing in the winter time. I talked about how bunny rabbits, the jack rabbits out here especially, have really long legs and they have pretty thick fur to keep them warm. That's about all they need. And then during winter time, there isn't a lot of vegetation for them to eat, but out here in Wyoming, in Montana, sorry, I'm from Wyoming, <laughs> this is Montana, um, but there's lots and lots of sagebrush. And so that sagebrush, since it's able to live all throughout all four seasons, that means the bunny rabbits and the bighorn sheep can live all four seasons because their food doesn't go away. It doesn't go into hibernation like like how the bear's food. Bears eat you know, small mammals and berries um, most of the time and there's none of that really during the winter time because the small animals are hibernating and all the berries are gone. So that's why they just decide to sleep because there isn't, there isn't any food. They have to save their energy for when there is food. What's that, Bat? <laughs> Another one is coyotes. Coyotes also mate for life, so that's pretty cool. You'll usually find two, two to five of them per pack, kind of around. Um, but if there's two by themselves, they're probably mates running around together. Um, and they have super, super thick thick fur. I like this piece of coyote coat so, so much because it is a winter coat of a coyote. So you can tell how thick and warm that would be. Then coyotes, they do a lot of scavenging during, during the winter time as well because they haven't adapted like, like the fox. They don't have quite as much keen, um, hearing and sense to be able to um, dig out other animals for prey that are hibernating but they scavenge a lot so like the deer that pass away during the cold and all that they that's usually what they eat during the winter time and then this is a bobcat the cats out here are pretty are pretty cool because they were made for winter time so as you can see, bobcats have these spots all over them, and usually they get their hides get a lot lighter. I'm guessing this is more like a summer coat for for a bobcat. But when they're white with black spots, doesn't that make them? Doesn't that help them blend into the snow? Yeah. Yeah. And then they have these big fluffy paws that were made for running in snow and hunting. Um, hunting a lot. They eat a lot of bats because they live up high. This is an interesting thing I, I thought about um, when I was researching bobcats because they live they live up high in, in the Rockies, you know, the Rocky-esque mountain ranges. We have a lot of rocks out here, but that's where they like to hide. Um, and there's a lot of bats that hibernate up underneath those big rocks. I feel like I'm a big bat. And they just eat them right off the wall. <laughs> Crazy. And they can catch mice every once in a while and like round hogs. Birds especially. And then these are some tracks. So this is a bobcat track. You can notice how their paw pads are like really spread apart. That is for running in snow. That's because these parts are full of fur. These big pods help just trek through the snow, um, whereas 
the the fox has like really little feet and they're really lightweight, so they just walk on top of snow most of the time. I love bobcats. But bobcats, bobcats have these big feet that were meant to trudge through snow. Same with um, the mountain lion. So if you guys want to look at these, you kind of have to be careful with this one. Drop it. This one is a mountain lion. You can really tell how far apart they're they're spread. I'm a chicken. And then I kind of named it hibernation and friends because I talked about how a lot of animals like to hibernate in groups. So the ten to twenty rattlesnakes, the it's five to ten, no, four to three to ten um, skunks. No, usually, usually there's like three or four of them out here just because we don't have as much of a skunk population. Um, but a couple animals who aren't of the same species sleep together as well. So I talked about how reptiles, amphibians, they usually go underground. So a lot of the toads out here, they sleep with, um, with like the groundhogs and the muskrats because they like to sleep in the same burrows and even they'll even sleep sometimes in like predator dens too but not very often because they'll get caught um and eaten <laughs> but but yeah those toads they sleep underground they dig themselves in the mud and then the the snow and the mud insulates them so that they stay they stay in that state of dormancy the rest of the winter time so i think toads are kind of the the funniest one because they because like i said they'll sleep with anybody out there um but yeah so how do you get that Thank you. So we didn't make the one that's flat, but the one that isn't very flat, we just poured um, like that cement mixture into the print directly onto the mud. And then once it's dried, we can take it out. Yeah. Do you have any more questions about hibernation? Or, or any of that? Bears actually have dens. Yeah, so bears have dens. Um, here's a good example of like a Montana bear den. So usually when it's they they go up underneath like brush out here and make like a big a big den otherwise we do have a lot of caves here um so they'll dig up into caves but mostly they like to go under brush and underneath trees and dig out themselves a spot pretty deep you guys can pass out but yeah, it's kind of tough to find, to stumble upon a black bear den out here because they are very remote creatures. Hi. Um, especially during the winter time, they try to find a nice, quiet, undisturbed spot to sleep. Um, and I think that's a good thing for us, <laughs> for sure, because we don't want to wake up a black bear. With our roads and our construction and all that. Do we have any more questions? Oh. Mine's not really hibernation, but I noticed today there's a bunch of finches and stuff in the back. Is that, I think they never left or? Um, so they did, they did probably leave. They just might have not gone super far, especially since, right, this is kind of a funky winter where we've been getting like super cold spells and then all of a sudden it'll be sunny like today. Yeah. Um, so they might be slowly coming back or just going back and forth um, where they need to be. But yeah. Do they risk dying then when they come back? Like if they come back and then yeah. we get another cold spell, then they could lose much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, luckily, things like finches, they don't travel in very, very big groups. Um, but they'll come back if it's nice and sunny out, you know, like in spring. Um, and then we'll have this cold spell. And then, yeah, a lot of them. Else? I 
think I'm done. You guys learned something? Yeah. That's great. You guys can come and look more at the at these if you want, but Thank you, Moss, for visiting us today. Thank you, guys. If you haven't gotten enough help to catch him, and remember, next Saturday we will have a storyteller here. Let's go look at all the animals. Should we go back again? Yeah. You might have missed one. Yeah, but not as. He touches the money every day, huh? Well, he should be.